Good afternoon and welcome to my broadcast. <laughs> Still playing with the um, technical side of things to make these Facebook Lives work. New format, new methodology because of the feature they removed from Facebook Live on the mobile phone. So yeah, hopefully it fits the framework okay, and hopefully it's sharp enough. But anyway, enough of the technical stuff. Let's jump into the topic at hand. Um, today I'll talk about what a healthy relationship might be. And also in, in, in contrast to that, what it shouldn't shouldn't what well, it doesn't work as to qualify that so if you've seen my broadcast before i do this i do these talks every day and i'm going to tell you at the back end where you find the replays and i've talked about love and relationships for a long time by the way the screen is right below the camera so i keep looking down on it by mistake so i'm going to keep looking at the camera so you can see me and i can see you or you can see my eyes that sort of thing so we're talking about today about love and relationships but in particular about what makes it what um what is a healthy and balanced relationship that's what i wrote and the reason, well, let me start with the reason why I'm talking about this because I had some conversations today that really spoke to this topic. Because what I really got clear about was, and this is this is <laughs> this is the advanced class. <laughs> I'll put it that way, because we're having a situation nowadays where people are in relationships who are empowered and getting things done and making things happen, yet the relationships have some what's we're looking for, some convoluted and challenging edges to them that don't work very well. And one thing we talk about, which is I've been talking about for quite a while now, is this tendency for us to fall into the trap of codependency, because that's a massive one. But the thing I want to get clear is that relationships that are, and I keep using the word advanced, but basically people where both partners are more conscious and awake, this language is going to sound interesting. If you're not in this conversation or you don't understand what I'm talking about, this may not fit you, but there are people I know and, and haven't been around the personal growth movement for 30 plus years. This, this sort of languaging comes up a lot. So let's see if I break it down to more simplistic, not simplistic, wrong word. More equitable terms. There's a better word. Okay, equitable sounds much better. So uh, first, first of all, let me let me define codependency in the framing I want to use it so that you can explain how not to do that and how to have a much healthier relationship. For me, codependency is a place where you give away your power to somebody else, usually unconsciously or unintentionally. That's the simplest way I can put codependency. Because codependency sets up a paradigm where you're actually giving your partner these imaginary puppet strings to your emotional um, experience, for some want of a better word. So when somebody says that they love you, you feel better. When they don't, when they say they don't love you, you feel bad. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't feel those ways, but the thing is, if you react to that that way, you're actually in a codependent paradigm because you don't have autonomy over your own feelings. In fact, you're reacting to what somebody else says. This is true by the of every relationship, every communication, every response to anybody, not just romantically, that when you become reactive to somebody else's words, you're actually in a place of codependency. And you're actually in a place where your ability to um, maintain your centeredness gets knocked off whack. And if you're starting to do more personal development works, personal growth work and personal introspection, finding balance inside and finding your center who you are is a massive intention to hold true to. But we've been wired by so many past relationships and so many past experiences and by society in general that being codependent actually is natural. And I don't agree that it is. In fact, if, if, if anything, it's dysfunctional. So... What, what makes a, um, a healthy and effective relationship, a healthy and balanced relationship, as I was putting the title, is where you find your way, ability to navigate through with respect for each other and autonomy in your own life. That's the simplest way I'm going to put it. So let me give you some more pieces of the puzzle, some more tools to play with. First of all, a healthy and balanced relationship, as I said, is about respecting each other, which means that it's equal, it's it's um, equal but different partners. That's one thing that came up in conversation today with a friend. Is where each partner, although and I'm speaking primarily about heterosexual relationships, but this will apply to gay relationships just as much. Um, yeah, it would apply just both ways too. But let me speak about masculine and feminine polarity first, because that's one of the biggest pieces in this that I'm passionate about. Masculine and feminine and masculine and feminine and, 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 and masculine and feminine energies. I've spoken about quite a lot in the last. Or oh. three years of broadcast. I mean, this this topic, the, these topics are called messages from the masculine. So I've been talking masculine and feminine for a long time. But in the context of relationship, there's a perception 
an ill-advised perception that one is better than the other, usually leaning towards masculine over feminine, which I absolutely disagree with. The trap that we fall into, the presumption we fall into, is because man strong, woman weak, is the is the is the baloney, the bullshit, the the errant approach about how masculine is better than feminine, because masculine energy and feminine energy are not 100% gender aligned all the time. They can be, and normally speaking, in heterosexual relationship, heterosexual relationship, healthy ones, because I've done unhealthy heterosexual relationships where I wasn't in my masculine. In a heterosexual relationship that's healthy, men own their masculine energetic and women own their feminine energetic. The thing I want to make clear is neither one is the weakest and neither one is the strongest because there are benefits of one and benefits of the other and they're different. So it's equal and different is the structure of a healthy relationship. The presumption that's made by men about women because they're usually smaller, more petite, less physically strong, is that they're weaker. I dare any man to go through the pain of childbirth and survive it. <laughs> I'm not speaking from experience, of course, but, I, but the realization that we don't have the ability to handle the pain that women go through in childbirth, I don't think we can even function that way. So to think that women aren't strong is a, is a lie. Just, just that, I'm, I'm being that blatant because that's the simplest way of saying it. Women are equally as powerful, equally as strong as men are just different ways and so when it comes to leadership in relationship and when it comes to the balance in relationship I was going to talk about there's also the assumption because man is the breadwinner in the old days and this is the sole paradigm we come out of a lot of women sometimes feel they've got to compete with the man and a lot of men think that women shouldn't compete with him those two don't go together as you may guess so what really is coming up here is that for men the realization is to respect women being in their feminine to respect women having power respect having women being equal is a smart move for women, the realization is that they can take up their space in their feminine, not their masculine. That's a whole other conversation I've done many times. Because I dated women in the masculine and it didn't work. It was easy, but it didn't work. That's a whole other talk to give another time. So the respect part is mutual. And the understanding of each partner's role and the and the um how to say this. The capabilities of each partner are, to, again, equal but different. So if you're looking to be in a relationship with somebody of the opposite sex, the op excuse me, the opposite polarity, because again, it's worse for gay or straight relationships, then it's important that you discover that the opposite polarity is equal to you and you're equal to them. So there becomes a mutual place of respect and understanding. There's so much to unpack. Mm. It's interesting. I, I, I thought I'd do a quick talk on this one. This was actually probably the core of everything I talk about. So it's, hang on a second. Let me think on the one I want to bring on this one. Okay, let me, I'm going to use the conversation from later early today to give me um, a place to build from. So what I was aware of was talking to this woman about this guy she's dating, that she feels like he is running the show, making things happen, and is not respecting her ability to lead herself. It's what started this whole conversation in the first place. And I want to be very clear about this. As much as I have watched these relationships unfold and helped clients discover this through themselves, the old paradigm, the old wiring, the old um, illusion that we came from, where women were the weaker sex and the... Um, the damsels in distress is no longer the truth. It really wasn't then either, but it was no longer available to be the truth. And what men have, have to realize, what men are growing into, discovering, learning about, becoming more of, aware of, is that we are in a place now where we have room to expand into service, into humanity, into kindness. So that we can be more respectful of women who are yet to be open, are yet to be offered the place of leadership. One of the challenges I know we had in the feminist movement in the old days, because feminist feminism and feminist versus femininity, different. The feminist movement was about punishing men. It seemed like the feminist movement was like women's rights, screw the men, and we're going to make it. No, we're going to make it our way, which is a pendulum swing away from men leading running the show, but it's still not balanced or equal. 
true feminism as far as I'm concerned, because I believe I am a feminist in the truest sense of the word, is respect, appreciation and honoring of the feminine. Very different. And when we men, inclusively, we men join in and respect women and the feminine, the paradigm shifts because we become equal partners this way. And again, equal but different is what I'm talking about here. And ladies, when you're in your feminine, really owning a feminine mystique, feminine power, feminine authority, feminine magic, feminine authority, it's a powerful place for you to be, which frankly for me is a place I come into great respect for. And I think, I hope, I believe, more men will claim this, own this, and, and experience this themselves. We have a place to grow into as men and women, the masculine and feminine expression. And the understanding is that when we can honor and respect and truly appreciate who we are, first of all as individuals, and then understanding who we are is worthy enough so when we see each other, we can presume the same of them and then respect them the same way. That's where things can change. And it really is the cornerstone of the work I do with my clients, but also the cornerstone of my life in the world so when I talk with friends, it's a nudge that I give them that sort of push in that direction, so to speak. So my my encouragement to you is to look at your own relationships. If you're in a primary relationship, or if you're looking to be in one, how do you approach partnership from a place of equality and balance? Does what I say resonate for you? Does it have impact that gives you some suggestions of what you can do differently? Because maybe what I'm giving you is going to change the way you do a relationship. And if so, I'd love to hear about it. And I'm very passionate about that. So feel free to let me know in the comments what you think about this and if it fits for you. You want to start, If you want to start a dialogue, we can talk about this. This is, in a way, I say this is kind of the core of the work I do, the core of my messaging, because it's so true that we need to change the old paradigm to a new one, to break the cycle once and for all of codependency, to really own the place we come from, to be, um, I'll say self-respecting is more than that. It's more about having such true devotion to ourselves out of care and compassion and love that when we see each other we bring that to them as well it really is an inside job in that sense and i've become very passionate about this which is why i'm offering my bff masterclass i'll put the link in the comments and i'll talk about it here but when you understand who you are is magical magnificent and amazing already i would trust would hope would pray that you choose relationships that meet you there if you're not doing that You've either got to educate the people around you so you can raise the dating pool quality you come into, or maybe we choose to be single for a while. Or thirdly, you meet somebody who's already there. That's a whole conversation too. And if you're stuck in this, reach out to me. I can give you some clues, some guidance, and some tips on where to go from to get where you want to go. Um, again, BFF Masterclass will be in the comments. And since I'm talking about self-respect self and self-support, I'll also put my self-love meditation in there too. Check those links out. Grab them if you want to. There's more to this I know, and I, I don't have an answer for it right now. But I wanted to give you just something to think about. This is something for chew on. It's a Sunday broadcast, hence the casual attire. And it's something that's been on my mind. I want to just put it out there as an invitation for you to discuss and think about as well. So let me know what you think of this. And, and if you have some thoughts, ideas, and response, let me know in the comments. Um, that's, I think it's about what I'm talking about today. This is my daily Facebook Live, by the way. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. You can join me every day at 5 p.m. It's every day. Sometimes it moves time-wise, but usually it's 5 p.m. Pacific time. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do. And this is episode number 962. Got a few of these. Um, you can find the replays on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. Although only about 200, of them, 200 show up there. But please like my page anyway. You know what's you're there. But you can find all of my broadcasts safely nestled in my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. Uh, please subscribe to my channel and on there is a playlist called messages from the masculine where all of these live and you can search by keyword by title whatever you look for to find what you're looking for and you can find all the resources there again 962 excuse me 962 broadcasts there's plenty of content to choose from um that's about it i think i appreciate you watching again the questions comments please put in the please put them in the below message me if you want any help and check out the links i put in the comments and uh i appreciate you watching take this to heart consider it process it, think about it, see if it lands up for you too. I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.